Holy cow! So freaking pod. Chapter, Chapter 19. 19. Hi guys, it's Charles. It's Sheridan. It's Chad. Oh, yes, this episode is ruined. This episode is ruined. Have fun. <laughs> we are actually, th- we, we are coming to you from the future. Yes. Of the second half of this episode. We are two to three weeks wiser and older. Yes. We we may have a, a slightly uh, more nuanced uh, perception of this book now yes. than we will in the second half of the show. It's totally true. Well, just think of it as like a message from the future that we will still be doing this podcast. And that we will still dislike this book. That's right. <laughs> All right. Summary. Actually, there is this little thing that we can talk about. So when our first wave audio editor, Helen Kedenster, was blooming around at Target... He found a terrible Fifty Shades knockoff book called This Man, and it makes uh, Fifty Shades of Grey look like like the wimpiest thing ever. Like It's a really horrifying book. Uh, he and I and uh, Asterisk read a couple passages before realizing that there's no way that we can talk about this book unless we have like an episode dedicated to it. So maybe next meta episode we will talk about it. It is very valuable in this discussion during the podcast of why like maybe 50 shades and the books like it shouldn't really be allowed to function as some kind of like example of how a non-vanilla relationship should be. <laughs> because I think that our collective population will take something like 50 shades of gray and then turn it into this man, which is like totally not okay. So you will talk about that in a couple episodes. Very interesting. Also, um, one of the upsides of re-recording this episode is that we can say April Fool's <laughs> April Fools, you April fools. fools. You're you're idiots. Everybody fell for it. They downloaded the podcast that we <laughs> that <laughs> gave every intention of making you think that it was us, but it in wasn't us. In the description in the podcast it said Charles and Cherry Doo and Chad, but it was actually World's Better Doom and Bread. Played by um uh in that order, Devious Vacuum, Science Man, and Helmet Condenser. So thank you guys. For helping yes, us. Thank you did a great that job. That was so awesome. I really, um, I liked it a lot. Okay, well. Me yeah. too. All right. Here's what happened in Chapter 19. Chad wrote this, so it's um, mildly incomprehensible. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we got Anna and we got Christian. And these two are just so ready for dinner. They're at Christian's place, and we know what happens there. And it was asleep again and wakes up at the start of the chapter again. Why is she so fucking sleepy? They spend a lot of time dicking around in Christian's apartment. This involves a dance which is not described in any meaningful way and serves no purpose other than to demonstrate Christian's ability to impress an idiot to Frank Sinatra. P.S. Anna can't find her panties. She knows Christian took them and decides to play a dumb game of not asking for them back. Taylor drives into Christian's parents' mansion where Anna is introduced to Christian's dumb sister Mia, an, anno- an annoying brat who is an obvious result of too much coddling and privilege and who takes an extreme interest in uh, the Oni-san trying to steal away her Oni-chan. <laughs> Christian's dad is a big Aryan, but seems friendly enough. <laughs> oh, but I see you didn't <laughs> transcribe the part where I said that doesn't mean he's a member of the Aryan nation. Well, you you put it in, so cool. Yeah. In the, in the house, uh, Kate meddles with Anna's life and affairs by bringing up Jose. Anna lets slip her trip to Georgia, and Christian is a pissy baby who can't take change or surprise. Everyone's hormones are spilling over into their Prosecco as they all make googly kissy faces at their respective partners, except for Mia, who's probably alone and dying inside. Nothing happens except for uh, the young Aryan slave woman <laughs> makes every makes eyes and blushes at Christian, who's oblivious and rich, and thus would never stoop to fucking the help. Christian finally can't take Anna's continued stupid defiant presence, so he whisks her away to the boathouse where he tells her that he is going to give her punishment fuck for not coming clean about the trip to Georgia and secret hangout with Jose, and the chapter ends. There you go. With a holy fuck. Holy fuck. (laughs) Alright, pet theories. I retroactively added a theory. So here it is. Yeah, I like it. (laughs) Christian is always thinking about Pokemon. 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 (laughs) Pokemon. I wish I knew what you were thinking! He smirks at me. Ditto, baby, he says softly, (laughs) as Taylor speeds into the night toward Bellevue. So, he's thinking about the Pokemon. Ditto. He's thinking about Pokemon breeding, to be specific, because Ditto is really important in the context of Pokemon breeding. So, of course, it's no wonder that he'd be thinking about Ditto, since he loves Pokemon and he's a Pokemon master. (laughs) 
Um, I like that. What what the what's important about ditto and breeding? I think, but I'm not sure, so don't get mad at me. That uh, you can only breed certain Pokemon together if they have like they share like a similar body type or type type. Like if it's like um, bipedal or like a ghost. Like ghosts can have sex with ghosts, but ditto can have sex with everything. So if you don't have, yeah. So there you go. And I think that it also creates like a fairly. I'm not sure. I, I'm, I'm not sure. I shouldn't say this because I don't know. But I think it creates a closer copy of uh, the the parent that isn't a ditto. I'm not sure. Ah, huh, interesting. Yeah. My theory is that this whole book is a pro-vaccine propaganda piece distributed by the world government. During dinner, Dr. Grace Trevelyan Gray uh, gets called away for a doctor call. And when she comes back, she says, Another measles case. Yes, a child. The fourth case this month. If only people would get their kids vaccinated. She shakes her head sadly and then smiles. I'm so glad our children never went through that. Right. I don't know. It's it's just a, a weird thing to, for her to, to mention. I guess it's like something that they they would need to call the doctor for, but that wouldn't, um, I guess, make her leave dinner. Yeah, I <laughs> Like leave the house. Weird. Yeah. Maybe it's that's... just like the most mild thing they could think of. Someone's got measles. Oh, don't don't get up or leave your house. We just thought we'd call you and tell you. Yeah, maybe that's just how she signs off the phone. Like another case of, case of measles. <sighs> if only people would get their kids vaccinated. <laughs> no matter what the problem is. So like, yeah. If they're just like, hey, you have the day off tomorrow, and she's just like, ah, oh, another case of measles. Another case of measles. <laughs> <laughs> it was my mom. Oh, another case of measles. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Mechanics. Mechanics. Resolving there and then not to ask him for them and not give him that satisfaction. I shall go meet his parents. Sans culottes. Culottes. <laughs> culottes. Culottes. Don't know how you say that word, but it means underwears. Um, culottes. Culottes. All right. Culottes. Obvious, terrible things about this sentence. Uh, it's a little bit hard to read because you have there, then, them, him. There and then not to ask him for them. Uh, that's weird. I don't think that should be in there. Uh, The next thing is that Anastasia says, she says not to ask him and not give him. So the first time we recorded this, it was my opinion that the first not would modify the entire action. And therefore she probably shouldn't have two nots, but I decided maybe that's, that's obviously like not a rule or anything. So maybe instead what I would say is um, deciding there and then not to give him the satisfaction of asking for the panties back, I shall go to dinner without them. But even so, uh, and this could be put in wording, but I'm not going to put it there because we're talking about it now. <laughs> Anna's voice is wildly inconsistent. This is a problem with pretty much every, yeah, okay, every other character in the book. At times, a- Anastasia is trying like really hard to sound like an adult, and then other times she's going like, holy crap, holy guacamole, <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> Just, you know, what kind of a girl is she? I don't think that uh, Yale James knows. Hey, are you talking about the, the, the sans culottes bit? there is that what you're that's what's making you sort of just everything she says here like i, I scroll down i was okay no sure <laughs> okay she says so first of all she's i mean she has like a, a lot of big boy words like resolving i will give him that satisfaction like i shall go yes and then the french words is automatically fancy <laughs> fancy <laughs> They are automatically <laughs> fancy. I think that's like a trick to try and make her sound really hoity-toity when she really isn't. I think it's more kind of goofy and nerdy. It is that too. I shall go to dinner without them, my lord. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Eclectic taste, Miss Steel. He murmurs and paces towards me like a panther until he's standing in front of me. His gaze so intense it takes my breath away. There's a period and a new sentence. It's just, his gaze so intense it takes my breath away. That's just a fragment. Well, is it a fragment? No, not really, but it's bad still. Yeah. I mean, she could have put an is in there easily and it would have been fine. And I guess her breath is taken away, so she, maybe she, she's not... Maybe she doesn't have enough oxygen to create a, a <laughs> correct sentence. But. I actually had this in wording, but I didn't quote it properly. So I'm just going to put this all here now. Last chapter, or the chapter before that, I complained because I forgot what kind of jungle cat Christian's like. So let the record show that he is indeed a panther, and I'll try not to forget again. And also, he takes her breath away a couple times in this chapter, which I think you said, but Anastasia did not agree to breath play on that contract that she didn't even <laughs> sign. Okay? 
So this is not cool. <laughs> I was just going to say that would be a great um, cute thing to say <laughs> to your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Like, okay, like, let's say you have a dom and she comes out wearing an amazing dress and you, you would be like, honey, I thought we agreed to no breath play. And you'd be like, what? And he'd say, uh, you're taking my, you're breath, taking away. my breath away. <laughs> That's so cute. And then the relationship's over. Oh. Maybe for you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Maybe for you. <laughs> no. <laughs> puns puns are a hard limit. Um <clears throat> uh what was I gonna say? You know, it doesn't matter. You're gonna say something about soft lips, according he to said the maybe he Well, I was gonna say something about the, the breath stuff. I was gonna no, equate yeah, equate Christian to some sort of um <clears throat> Damn. What Dementor? Yeah, Dementors. Hey. Wow, like really? Rates, rates that do, yeah, like rates Sweet. that do that sort of thing. What about Dementors the cat are... that steals the baby's breath? Yes, yes, yeah. I was that basically too. thinking of like demons that do that. Like, what if he's some sort of demon that's like swooping in and literally stealing her life through her breath? Yes. There we go. That's my pet theory. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, sure it can be. Why not? Sure. Does does it not does it not cut the mustard? Uh, I just came up with it so late, and we're mechanics now. I'm not doing my job. <laughs> You're never doing your job. No, I think that you sometimes have done your job. I'm sorry. I don't want to be... Let him read his yes, thing. <laughs> read your thing. Uh, soft lips brush across my temple, leaving sweet, tender kisses in their wake. There should be, at least in my opinion, a comma between sweet and tender, because it's two different adjectives describing the kisses. What if tender kisses is a, is a noun on its own? Sweet, tender kisses. <laughs> tender kisses. A registered trademark of Christian Grey. <laughs> I had a problem with this last time. I will only spend less than 30 seconds on it this time. I don't believe that lips leave kisses. I believe that they give kisses. So the timeline of this uh, action is messed Maybe up. he's depositing Hershey's kisses on her uh, temple. Like his mouth is a little Hershey kisses yeah. machine. Bloop. Yeah. Bloop. <laughs> ah, the most delicious boyfriend. <laughs> This is getting oh, a little... Un- no, never mind. I'm not going to make it. <laughs> let's not. Yeah, let's reference. not. <laughs> well, I was going to say something about a commercial. Oh, a commercial? Won't. Forget it. Okay, well. Uh-huh. <laughs> His demands for a personal trainer don't seem so outlandish now. In fact, they're mandatory if I am to have any hope of keeping up with him. Outlandish now, comma, in fact, comma. Some would argue that this is not a comma crime. However, I would argue that it is. Um, I believe that that sentence... Actually, no, I'm sorry, not a comma crime. The real term I'm looking for is comma splice, in which you've tried to shove two sentences together by putting a comma in between them. So really what it should be is, his demands for a personal trainer don't seem so outlandish now, period. In fact, comma, they're mandatory. Blah, 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 blah. So there you go. That's what I think. <laughs> All right. Where did you meet, Anna? Mia asks, Mia asks him. Okay, let me explain to you what's going on in this sentence. Where did you meet, comma, Anna, question mark. Mia asks him. And then Christian answers Mia about where he met Anna. Okay. It should say, where did you meet Anna? But instead it says, where did you meet Anna? <laughs> like he's like she's talking to Anna, but she's not. She's talking to Christian. And he answers her. But this comma changes the whole meaning of the sentence and makes it wrong. And it's it makes me so mad. It's really gross. <laughs> Uh, and I looked back in the in the fan fiction version, and there is no comma when Alex asks, "Where did you meet Bella?" So I don't know how that got in there when she when she copy pasted it over and 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 fi- find replaced uh, Anna with uh, Bella with Anna. Yeah, this must have been one of those cases where either E. L. James or like an editor was just like reading reading through and just was like, "Oh, that's wrong." <laughs> Because I didn't actually yeah. bother to read the whole thing. <laughs> uh, I smile involuntarily as I recall being in his arms as he spun me around his living room. So unexpected. And he has my panties somewhere. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I even remember, even remember writing that. Uh, well, obviously, I didn't write that. E.L. James wrote it. Yeah. But um, there should probably <laughs> there should probably just be a new sentence for, and he has my panties somewhere. So it should be, um, so like, it's sort of being interjected so i smiled involuntarily as i recall being in his arms also there should be a comma or something as he spun me around his living room so unexpected and he has my panties somewhere 
something like that. I think that nothing could fix this sentence in its current iteration, and let me tell you why, because it, it ties into my next complaint. I have this quote. Christian obviously adores her, Mia. It's a revelation. And she comes barreling down the hall, raven-haired, tall and courageous. She's about my age. So that sentence that starts with and sounds so unnatural that my initial reaction was to say, like, there is something, like, so wrong with this. Like, that has to be a rule. And much like in the um, revision that you suggested, uh, Chad, where you said maybe the next sentence should start with and he has my panties somewhere. I agree. Sorry, panties. And he has my panties somewhere. I disagree with that because um, I don't think that it's good to start sentences with conjunctions. And writingtips.com says, while it is acceptable to use conjunctions to start a sentence, you should use them carefully and efficiently, else your text might become choppy. So this isn't a hard rule for mechanics, but I think that it's I think that doing this is a result of lacking mechanical knowledge. Um, and, like, I can remember being in elementary school where teachers would say, like, don't start a sentence with butter and. Like, it's not that it's not allowed. It's just that you're oftentimes going to sound either too casual or too weird and stilted, much as E.L. James writing sounds here. I was told the and thing, but um, they had not. I think uh, for some reason, most of the places I went to school didn't ever mention but because it's come, become so. Mine all did. Interesting. Oh, really? Mentioned but, yeah. Also it's, because. It's so and then... common now, though, at least for but. They also did that for because, and I was a little mm. smartass, and I was like, what if I say, because of this, comma, and they're like, oh, well, fine, you obviously know the rules, why don't you just <laughs> do whatever you want, Cherry Doom. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't even get into the Gifted Intelligence program. That's right. Okay, so I guess my other thing I had to say about this was, it might be better if rather than, and she comes barreling down the hall if James had written, Mia comes barreling down the hall, etc. And I think that we also need to stop yeah. with the revelations. It's not really a big plot yeah. point if it's apparent, like, right when the character itself, herself, ap- appears. Because, like, if he had pretended, like, oh, I fucking hate her. I fucking hate her so much. Oh, we're adopted anyway. She's not, like, my real sister. And then it turned out that he did like her. Then that would be a revelation. This is just, like, mildly surprising <laughs> at, at best. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, couldn't the fact that it is being revealed in any any intensity still be a revelation? It's like um, <laughs> Christian comes into the room walking a dog. This is my dog, he says. And it's a dog. <laughs> well, it's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> it is a dog, but it was already kind of like, it was already kind of implied that that it was a dog. So I don't think that we need to keep saying that it's a dog <laughs> because it's obvious. <laughs> All right. Um, I think she do- she does this Anne thing a lot, but I think it, it as much as I don't really like it uh, style wise, sh- it works better when there's something like passionate going on. Like when, uh, for for example, she would say, "He puts his fingers in my pussy, and I'm lost to the amazing sensation." Yes, yeah. That's a little. Uh, she does that a lot. And the and as the start of a sentence there uh, works a little better because, you know, it's, you know, sudden that she's lost to the passion or whatever. Mm, I think I agree with that. But not here where they're just meeting his, his sister. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that you should do it often. It's definitely something you should do sparingly. Um, because And in particular has like, since it is m- more of an obvious conjunction conjunction than, than but is, um definitely makes things seem more fragmented um so like the ways that i would generally do it are like you just said cherry doom when it was something like surprised or unexpected or uh, like uh just thrown in interjected that's why i suggested it uh above for my thing uh, it also can ma- make things sound like sort of humorously matter of fact which is sort of why i did it for the andy has my panty somewhere just like throwing that in after the fact okay moving on Raven-haired, eh, it should have a, it should have a hyphen in my opinion. This is uh, when oh yeah, it's when Anna's describing Mia. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. agree. I agree too. Mary Kent. Mia says this about Paris. It's a beautiful city. Mia agrees, in spite of the Parisians. <laughs> um, I just feel like this is a very British sentiment. Uh, I mean, you know, Americans say you know make fun of the French all the time, but not so much anymore, I yeah. guess. But um. 
I feel like Britain has had um, a way longer a, rivalry for sure, or not really a rival. Well, maybe a rivalry, but like a a mutual sort of. They're mutually antagonistic. Yeah, yeah. I feel like well, British is kind of like that towards the whole continent <laughs> of Europe. You I know, think they, they're more they, so with they, France because yeah, definitely because they're like right across the channel. So yeah. the channel, yeah, the channel. The channel is just uh, really just a conduit for. For, for ill will. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess it's me. I thought I got away with this, thinks Anastasia, when she refers to seeing Jose at the bar and, like, not telling Christian about it, I guess. Um, first of all, uh, I thought I'd got away with, I'd got away with this. is very British. I don't think any of us would say, I thought I'd got away with this after committing an action that is subjectively incorrect. Um, but also, should should she not have gotten away with that, since doing that was in the past? Or perhaps she's, I mean, is she thinking of this as a continuing lie? Like, my mission is to lie to Christian. Like, drat, I thought I'd gotten, I'd gotten away with this mission, uh, mission to lie to Christian. This mission to tish, to tish, to tish, to tish. I guess nobody has an answer. But I think that she should have gotten away with that, and not, not had gotten away with that, this. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah. uh anastasia uh once again refers to the current place that she's in as washington state in in her mind to people that are in washington state um which it's really silly she, she knows we, we should know she doesn't need to <laughs> clarify i agree well she was living in portland before no she was living in vancouver vancouver washington wait really yeah, because she went to the Washington she State to, University yeah, of Vancouver. Vancouver. Oh. And she just, she went to Portland for, um, stuff. Stuff. I guess she, like, yeah. <laughs> that was straight. Is Portland on the border? Yeah, Portland's pretty close, and Washington State, Vancouver is, like, right there. The Vancouver oh, and Washington okay. State is, like, right. They're, like, they're, it's, like, right across, right across the, the river. Water. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's why. Mm. All right, I feel like we've had this discussion. All right, okay. anyway. Anyways, um... Ahem. Over our dessert of lemon syllabub, you may be thinking to yourself, if you're, if you're not uh, from England or somewhere in Great Britain, what the fuck is lemon syllabub? Americans would not generally know about this dessert. It is an English dessert. Wikipedia says that it is a drink or dish of milk or cream curdled by the admixture of wine, cider, or other acids, and often sweetened flavored. I paraphrase because that was confusing. And just like, yeah... It's like syllabub. I mean, she could have said like confit or parfait. Are those like the same things, basically? <laughs> well, those are French. Okay, well, <laughs> well, but this is English, and that is very important because of Americans. The whole dinner is pretty British. They have beef Wellington for fuck's sake. Yeah, I feel like most Americans know what beef Wellington is. I didn't know until I looked it up. I thought it was. I thought it was the thing where you just tied up the beef, but I think that's pork roast beef wellington little, is just to clarify like a beef pie it's like a tube beef pockets it's like a beef tube uh-huh isn't there like yeah. breading or something yeah, yeah it's like beef wellington. it's like in a and it's in a bread tube yeah <laughs> yeah all right it, it looks really good i really i really want to try some it's apparently very difficult to make yeah it is well um i think it's like gordon ramsay's signature dish yeah or definitely um, he tried to um he had this show where he was like teaching prisoners how to cook and oh. they tried to make beef Wellington, and uh, it was full wacky hijinks. That reminded me of something. I th- I know I brought this up before. I don't think I brought, ever brought it up in the podcast, but um, I watched um Master Chef Junior or Junior Master Chef, and I like the kids, a little bit of that. Man, it was really good. Um, yeah. But like one of the one of the last challenges, and these were kids that were like raging from ages like nine to thirteen. They had to make beef Wellington, and pretty much every group did it. Wow, <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah. Just from, like, tasting it. Like, they figured out how to do it from tasting it. Whoa. That's crazy. <laughs> or, um, no, he, he also showed them. He showed them how to do it, that's right. But, um... Never mind, I'm not impressed anymore. Not impressed anymore. The whole, like, not just the dinner, but, like, the atmosphere seemed very, uh, sort of, like, visiting a country manor in Britain with, like, the help and all that. Yeah. 
I don't know what a colonial mansion is exactly. I guess I should look it up, but I don't think it is British manor style, but... Um, mm, it is a little bit. Just a little, a little bit. Maybe a little more plantation-y. Yeah, a little bit like a mix of plantation-y and like... Manor. Yeah, manor. God, where does, where does fucking Darcy live? He lives in... Um, he doesn't live in Pemberley, yeah, does he? I think he does. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like a mix of Pemberley and a plantation. Gone Flu Plantation, which I had forgotten the name of. But yeah, and then they go out on the grounds and they hunt for grouse. No, they don't. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, wording. Wording. I put on my bra, slip into my dress, and climb into my shoes. She couldn't just say, like, she's got to vary the verbs so it doesn't get stale. She can't say, I put on my bra yeah. and my dress and my shoes. Or she could just say, like, I put on my clothes. <laughs> Well, we gotta know what they are so we know what she looks like. I shimmy in my bra, tangle in my dress, and cha-cha in my shoes, I said one time a couple weeks ago, and it's still <laughs> true today. And I said, I ollie into my bra, kick flip into my dress, and grind into my shoes. <laughs> and I laughed, just like that. And so did I. <laughs> All right. I didn't laugh. Chat. It was my own joke. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, Christian says to Anna, are you ready for this? And it made me think of, y'all ready for this? And we did it much better the first time, listeners. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. Actually, we did. No, we really didn't. Oh, okay. I think I might be mixing up my stadium theme. No, that's the right one. I think. There's also, like, Space Jam. I guess they don't use that in stadiums, so. though. They might. Not as much anymore. Party people in the house. Let's go. I think all right, anyway. <laughs> there might be licensing issues. Okay. Okay. Um, that, that's all I have to say about that. I have this other thing, but I'm not going to recreate it. Okay. Okay. Um, a quote from Anastasia. His world indeed, and I want to belong in it. But on his terms... <laughs> <laughs> this is a horrible sentence. Uh, it's recycled from earlier, from earlier chapters. I don't think there's really anything mechanically wrong with it, even though, like, it's sort of weird. But, like, all right, this keeps coming up. I'm sorry to be reminded of The Little Mermaid. Like, look, Anastasia, you're not a mermaid. Christian is not the opposite of a mermaid. Stop doing this. All he likes, all he wants is for you to try BDSM. It's not, it's not like that. This sentence isn't even necessary in the first place. Like, we would know from Anastasia's response alone that she's unsure by saying, like, or whatever she says, like, before this. <laughs> like, we don't need this that's much. That's probably it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really not necessary. And that's what I have to say about that. All right. Um, I feel mighty fine, Miss Steele. Where did this come from? He said it, like, three times in the last two chapters. Never before, and I wouldn't be surprised if he never says it again after this. I don't know. It's like she was just in a in a some sort of kick, where she wanted to write that for the few weeks that she was writing these two chapters or something. Yeah, and that's weird. <laughs> she does. She seems to do that like constantly with uh, certain phrases and things. She'll just throw yeah. them in, and then they won't see them for a while. Um, this is kind of another example of that inconsistent voice I was talking about, where Christian is sometimes like you know. At times, he's very, like, lordly, for lack of a better term. Like, like oh, he's so, like, you know, his word choices are so fucking great. And then suddenly he's <laughs> like, I feel mad at fern. Do, do, do. <laughs> like, I, I just wish she would figure it out. This is something I guess I should probably wait to bring up in, like, in more depth than, well, not really. It's sort of a pretty small topic in, like, one of the a meta episodes in the future or something. But when you guys read the book... um. What sort of a voice do you like read it in in your head? Because uh, I when I started out, I was reading it in more of like with more of an American uh, accent. But then after reading like two chapters, I couldn't get over the fact that it sounded so like uh, it had so much British it like so much of a British slant to it. And I just automatically, especially like the dialogue between characters. Uh, so I started hearing like a like a received accent, which is weird. I started, um, I started reading everything in a kind of, like, nerdy, stilted voice. <laughs> I know that's, and I'm not kidding, I mean, I, I really did. Like, so, the way that some people are like, perchance, mayhap, my lady wants some Gatorade. <laughs> like, it's just, I mean, that's, 
that to me is more how they sound. Like, you know, like Americans like trying to sound really British. Yeah. Um, I don't, ha I have not noticed how, uh, I've been reading it. I guess I'm just not that imaginative a reader. <laughs> <laughs> um, bummer. Maybe you're just more focused on things that are important. <laughs> Uh, okay. Um, are you thinking about taking a break now you've finished your degree? So we just, we had discussed this and it's only in my copy, but it is pretty British English. Um, it should probably be perhaps now that, or are you thinking about taking a break now that you've finished your degree is how it looks in Cherry Dimit Chat's books. But in mine, it's that other way. Um, Anna's response to this is, I'm thinking about going to Georgia for a few days. And I, ha I, Listeners, I have psychic powers. I'm going to use my psychic powers to see into the past. And this, I think, I think I'm getting a vision. Okay, I see something. What this sentence used to be is, are you going on vacation too now that you've finished your degree? Because they were just talking about Kate going to Barbados. But in this iteration, and in the next one as well, this question is kind of weirdly irrelevant because he's simply asking like, oh, are you taking a break? Not, are you going on vacation? Because... Before the sentence, and right after the sentence, they're talking about vacation. He's the only one who's being not clear about that. I don't know. I think I think that it's can it can be inferred that going on a vacation is a break. Mm. I mean, sure, <laughs> but I mean, it's just that they were referring to it so explicitly, and so for him to suddenly like make it something different, and then for her to kind of like get back on the same track, it almost seems like he was asking her if she was also going to go somewhere on vacation. Hmm. That's just how it appears to me. Chat. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Elliot holds forth about his latest building project. Uh, so my notes here say that this is wrong, and then holds forth has the opposite meaning of how it's being used here, which is true. However, in like the 44th definition uh, that you can find uh, for it, it actually does have the meaning of like to reveal information. But pretty much everything before that is about holding back things. So yeah, we had an argument. Like it sounds like hold forth might mean I'm holding this information forth for you to to eat out of my hand. Like Rafiki and Simba, he's holding the lion forth into the sunlight. <laughs> yeah, but that's different. Like you're actually like when you say um, like if you're saying like I hold forth about something, that doesn't sound the same as I hold forth something. Mm. Right. <laughs> like saying because because when okay, you say look, I'm sorry what I'm say, trying like, to say is that it would be well, when you say like he, you're holding back well, if he well, literally true, had a like, building project <laughs> like in a roll and was holding it forth that would be okay but it is okay <laughs> because it has that definition like yes, it, they must have colloquially picked it up over time because people were using it that way like you know how literally it's become figuratively yes um like i said the last time we recorded this how has how has literally changed to figuratively i don't i've never heard uh, it just has it just has acquired the second definition yeah, it's because, because of how, people how it's say used. Like, that literally was the worst thing that ever happened to me <clears throat> I thought they yeah. were just. I thought they were just being sarcastic, or like. Not always. No, people just have started using it as an intensifier. Yeah, like, hyperbole. Well, oh, okay. Yeah, I guess I, I thought I was thought I was just sort of. So oh eventually, God. hyperbole, like, more than, more than, figurative. Sorry, sorry for the argument. I was confused. <laughs> Yeah, I would have thought that we'd resolve this maybe last, <laughs> last time. Last time. <laughs> He's totally beguiling, and I'm bewitched. Both words that Christian uh, has used to describe Anna, and now Anna is using them to describe Christian. Lazy. Um, and then, yeah, I don't like it. Lazy. Lazy. Um, Anna uses the swear, holy crap, Lola. Uh, that's dumb, okay, bye. Carlisle's name, uh, Carlisle from Twilight, has been renamed to Carrick, or Carrick. Uh, this is I'm just Carrick. the laziest name translation so far. Yes, it is. Um, speaking of Carrick... Elliot says to Carrick, So did you catch the Mariners game, Dad? I mean, this is just like, how about that sports team? <laughs> and then you suddenly don't have to write dialogue because you know nothing about sports teams um, if you're E.L. James. Uh, to me, this seems like she didn't really care about using dialogue in a meaningful way to characterize her minor characters. And I would say that there's probably a less heavy-handed way to do this. Like, she could have them talk about a topic that she's capable of writing dialogue for. That's something she could do. But then they'd just be talking about, like, kippers and, 
pheasant hunting. I love drinking. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody here does love drinking, so it's all right. <laughs> is Mia old enough to drink? Yeah, she's the same age as Anna. Oh, right. Yeah, right, okay. Yeah. So it's like Christian's dating his younger sister. Yes, it is like that. Hmm. It's exactly like that. It's exactly like that! <laughs> Anna straight up calls Christian Fifty Shades, capital F, capital S. So, like, just continuing using this phrase all the time after she introduced it a few chapters ago when he said he was Fifty Shades fucked up. Why? Fans just must must love that phrasing, uh, and they've taken a huge liking to it, and now she's got to cram it in there a bunch. <laughs> That's my theory. It's a good theory. Uh, I had thought that it sounded like an analog of some idiomatic phrase, like maybe foobar, like <laughs> fucked up beyond repair, Fifty Shades fucked up. But then in our discussion, we became fairly sure that this wasn't the case because I, we can't think of anything that it really sounds like. That's not what foobar means. What? It's an acronym, isn't it? It's not? Yeah, it's fucked up beyond all recognition. Oh, yeah. did I say repair instead of recognition? You just said fucked up beyond repair. Sorry, fucked up beyond That's okay. all repair. I'm sorry. Um, or all recognition. Uh, anyways, so... <laughs> I don't need to say that next part, but it was just like an example of when it said, uh, when the when the woman slave Gretchen, uh, the Wretchen, <laughs> comes in the room and is like batting her eyelids, I mean her eyelashes, at Christian. Anastasia says, he may be Fifty Shades of... Or, well, she says it in her head, I'm sorry. He may be Fifty Shades of Fucked Up, but he's mine! <laughs> it would have been a much better scene if she'd actually said it out loud, just, like, throwing her plate on the ground. Oh, she got to clean it up. Just like the beginning of that Beyoncé yeah. video. Oh, dear, Anastasia, you are making a scene. <laughs> <laughs> would they all... Would, would her, his whole family have just tittered like that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. And now we take you to the past. <laughs> okay, um, time for situational. Uh, I guess it's me first. The room is spacious, tastefully furnished in creams, browns, and pale blue. Comfortable, understated, and very stylish. This is... You've already done this. I mean, the one <laughs> addition that you made to this is that there are browns in here. That's it. <laughs> Like, can you, can you please do something different? Please, there are other colors. <laughs> no, not in this book. Oh, it's God. a theme. We just don't know what it, it represents. Yeah, even the help is in the pale blue. <sighs> it probably just represents like Anastasia in some way, or like places where she's meant to be. But then that's weird that the help would also be wearing it. Maybe it's just women in general. <clears throat> Maybe, Maybe. Eel James wrote this all in one sitting, like how Jack Kerouac wrote the road, the or on the road, and uh, the light pale blue was just the color of amphetamines. Um. <laughs> so there's insane jealousy in this chapter from all sides. Just every which every jealousy you could think of is happening. <laughs> basically. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I gave you some examples here in case you want to talk more, or I can do it. I don't care. Sure. Uh, they talk about Mrs. Robinson. Um, where did you learn to dance? I ask tentatively. He turns to gaze at me, his eyes unreadable beneath the in- intermittent light of passing street lamps. Do you really want to know? He replies softly. My heart sinks, and I and now I don't, because I can guess. Yes, I murmur reluctantly. Mrs. Mrs. Robinson was fond of dancing. It's like, first of all, where did you even tell her that? Don't yeah. just say like I learned to dance when I was a teenager, yeah. or like my mom's friend taught me. Well, she probably would have guessed. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, if you if you open with, like, do you really want to know, like, yeah, I think that kind of sets the tone. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gretchen the slave girl <laughs> uh, is making eyes at Christian pretty much every time she enters the room. Grace appears carrying two plates, followed by a pretty young woman with blonde pigtails, dressed smartly in pale blue, carrying a tray of plates. Her eyes immediately immediately find Christian in the room. She blushes and gazes at him from under her long mascara lashes. What? There's no question mark. Like, huh? No, no, I was just commenting. There's no question mark. It's just, what? Yeah, like, she's, she's like... What? (laughs) What? She's totally, um, appalled that someone could think is looking at her, her person. Yeah. That she's fucking. And also, I mean, I thought that you can make the argument 
that many of Kate's actions are made out of jealousy. We're not going to talk about it yet. We're going to save it for Kate chat, but you will see what I mean. And also, it's probably possible that Anastasia's like really jealous of Kate's relationship too. So I mean, yeah. there's just so much. Oh, and also they talk about Jose. Uh, yeah, and Christian gets jealous of Jose. Then they talk about Georgia, and Christian is like, "Man, I want to fuck a state, but he doesn't <laughs> know what Georgia's like." <laughs> What is it with the state fucking? First Alaska, now Georgia. Like, can't you just have one, you greedy person? I mean, I think these people just, they need just need to learn how to relax and not be so jealous all the time. Yeah. So you're trying to say that it's okay to be in a poly-state relationship. All right. It's, it's true. You can pass through as many states as you want to. You wouldn't think that Alaska and Georgia would get along, you know? She's, up no- she's from the north. She's from the south. Like, Alaska's, like, even beyond north. It's, like, full of, like, oh, never mind. Alaska's so mysterious. Know. It's not even, like, <laughs> connected to the other states. No, okay. All right. Go ahead, Chad. Go ahead, Chad. Go ahead, Chad. Go um, ahead, Chad. His face splits into a huge grin. That's gruesome and frightening. Christian is probably a monster. When does he do this? When he's about to fuck her in the boathouse? Nope. When she comes out and is, like, uh, he's like, are you ready to go? And she's like, yep, I'm ready. He's like, have you got everything? Yeah, I have oh. everything. And so he like knows what she's doing. So his face splits into a huge grin. Oh, um, I see. His face splits in half. His tongue lolling around. <laughs> I'm thinking like a second mouth opens vertically on his face. I'm thinking a double head from uh, <laughs> Silent Hill 3. Yeah, oh, that's, that's a good way to think about it. That's basically what I was thinking of. Okay. Yes. Uh, Mia takes her seat beside Christian and grabbing his hand squeezes it tightly. So that should be Mia takes her seat beside Christian and comma grabbing his hand squeezes it tightly. Or without a comma after Christian and then a comma after and. But then that doesn't make sense either because if you remove the aside which is grabbing his hand, Mia takes her seat beside Christian and squeezes it tightly. <laughs> um, <laughs> gross. Anyways, um, so my comment on this was I would never hold hands with my sibling like that's gross and i hate my sibling so much i would never hold hands um this is are you trying to tell me that families aren't inherently dysfunctional and like filled with bad relationships my immersion (laughs) um i mean then again like i i think of people i have like better relationships with like um i have i had two cousins who were a month and 10 days older than me they're twins. And they grew up um, on the street, like, parallel to mine, and we were really close. Like, I would say that was more of a sibling relationship. And I have a stepsister, too. And, like, that's the kind of thing I would do those things with. Like, we're, you know, we're all very, like, loving towards each other in that way. So maybe that... So maybe it speaks more about me than the book that I found it, like, really strange that you do it with, like, someone you grew up with. Um, but I... And even so, like, I don't think brothers and sisters are really into doing that kind of thing. Like, ooh. I mean, they are adopted siblings, but yeah. Yeah. And uh, something about the Westermark effect, I'm sure. Well, but, uh Christian's family is extremely anime. <laughs> they are, and they also are very touchy, too. Like, oh, like hugs all around, as uh, yep. we will get to in a moment. Yeah. <sighs> it's, because uh, doc- it's because Dr. Grace Trevelyan Gray is secretly vaccinating them all when they hug. <laughs> <laughs> so... Anna mentions the fact that she's not wearing panties so many times, um, just like like almost once a paragraph when it she first starts. But later, when she starts talking to people um, in public, she she cools off a little bit and forgets that she's not wearing panties. But there's stuff like I'm almost outside with no panties. Who's he kidding? He's no gentleman. He has my panties. In the very next paragraph, I put those are my favorite lines. Spoilers, <laughs> I guess. Uh, it's just like, I don't have panties. Did you guys remember that I don't have panties? And I guess that it's it's supposed to be, like, because her mind's on it all the time, and it's so new, but it sort of just seems like James is the one who's dazzled by the novelty, and she can't stop talking about it. Well, like, I'm trying to think of a, a sanitary way to put this. When you're used to a, a routine with your clothing, like, if you sleep a certain way at night, like, let's say you're like me, and you wear, like, clothes to bed, which is not something that everybody does... Yeah. If you suddenly stop doing that, it feels like weird enough that you think about it like the first couple hours that you're doing it. You're like, eh, like, eh. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's also kind of like, so 
Anna, like, immediately figures out that Christian must have stolen her panties so that she would have to ask him for them. And, like, that is what the game is, apparently. And I just, like, they, he hasn't ever done anything like that before. So it's very strange and too perfect, I would say, that they um, immediately fall into this little yeah. game. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I almost feel like it's a little bit too clever for Anna's yeah. previous characterization. Like, she usually doesn't figure stuff like that out. Yeah. Yeah. It's quick, it's easy, and it's something different for you to feel and experience. I know they're quite brutal, and I do like that in a restraining device. He smiles smiles at me mildly. My, uh, it's about the cable ties. He smiles at me mildly. Yeah, he's, uh, this is Christian talking about the cable ties. Um, It's sort of... Well, Cherry Dim has already talked at length about why you shouldn't use cable ties. And here, he acknowledges... Yeah, I mentioned this in my safe yeah. word. Yeah. He acknowledges outright that you shouldn't use them, yeah. basically. <laughs> he's just a, he just says he does it because he's lazy and also he likes because to hurt he, people. Because he do like that, that's why. They can hurt people in a real way, apparently. Yeah. Moments later, Grace returns, her brow furrowed. Mr. Gray cocks his head to one side. Like, Christian. So, that quote, I was just thinking to myself, like, to what extent... Do adopted children take on their parents' mannerisms? I guess because I would expect it's sort of, like, based on the age that someone gets adopted. Like, and Christian was sort of old when he got adopted at the age of four. Just in terms of, like, you know, imprinting on other adults, you would think that he would kind of be done with that by now. I don't know. I don't think so. I think it doesn't really matter uh, what... Like, I would say, you know, up to the age of, like, maybe 10 or something. Or, you know, just if spending a lot of time with anybody, yeah, you probably adopt their mannerisms. Maybe. I mean, it happens. Yeah, I, I tend to... I think I agree mostly with Cherry Doom. It's sort of weird, like, the thing with parent, parental mannerisms is you'll probably pick them up a lot... You'll, you'll continue them a lot, uh, uh, a lot more unconsciously than you would, like, if you were just hanging out with new people and... Like, you probably realize when you were starting to imitate somebody you just started hanging out yeah. with, like, a little bit. Yeah. But with parent, with, like, with this sort of thing, it's probably something that, like, Christian just does and doesn't realize that... He may he may also realize. I don't know. It's No, I, I don't think that weird. he would realize. I just was wondering, like, to what extent that would be true. And um, I do agree. There's a definite, <laughs> definite difference between, like, imitating something your friends do and, like, subconsciously imitating something. Like... I started saying, like, ugu a couple years ago when I was living with my old roommates, and uh, and they all started saying it too, and they got really mad at me <laughs> for bringing it up. It's human behavior to do that sort of stuff, um, and, like, the, the thing with, like, new stuff, apparently when you're, uh, or, I mean, especially when you're older, is that you'll actually pick up on it. Yeah. Because uh, it's, like, a sort of different, usually you'll notice that the, the one person does it a lot, and then you'll notice that you do it a lot if if you pick it up. So, yeah, yeah. I think, um, like, especially if you're adopted very young, you will definitely like, like a baby, you'll yeah. definitely have your parents' mannerisms. Um, no, I think baby for sure. It's just that you know, Christian had. I mean, we haven't. I don't know if we talked about this, but you know, his mother. He was raised by the single mother until she died. So yeah, but there is, I think, still a genetic component that will alter how you necessarily behave at any given time compared yeah. to your adoptive parents. Interesting. Okay, I just thought it was something. Anna laments that she has no special skills, and there's nothing that she can teach Christian, whereas he knows everything and can teach her everything. And I wondered if that was really true, and I was going to ask what what uh, we think that she might be able to teach Christian. Mm -hmm. So I had something to say about this, but I decided that Chad would read the quote that we're talking about here. My worst suspicion is confirmed. She has taught him well, and the thought depresses me. There's nothing I can teach him. I have no special skills. I'm sort of feeling like it might be true that Anastasia can't teach him anything. Not because... Not necessarily because she doesn't have skills. Not even how to love. <laughs> <laughs> no, because that is something he would passively learn if the storyline is going that way. But I've found with like teaching and learning with other people because um, it sort of depends on how they view you. Like I've noticed in a lot of situations, like... If the person I'm trying to teach sees themselves as, like, above you in some way, like, and I'm yeah. thinking of very specific examples here with at least two different people, um, they're really difficult to teach. So if Christian sees himself as, like, you know, dominant over Anastasia, like, he can't learn anything from her. And now, that's not to say that dominants can't learn anything from their submissives and that you can't learn something from somebody, you know, that is your sub, but, like, 
you have to be open to it. Like, you have to have some respect for them in their intelligence and their skills. But if you don't have that, or if you think, like, oh, like, this person's just, like, a child, or this person's just, like, a dumb girl, like, she can't teach me anything... I feel like he does have some measure of respect to her for her, and he's always saying like, "I'm dazzled by you. You're so brave." Or, dazzle, but dazzle. I mean, that that's a little liar. patronizing. I don't think. Yeah, it's sort of patronizing. It's just like, I mean, he's not praising her for like a concrete skill she has. It's like, oh, you're pretty. Yeah. Oh, you're brave. Like that's not a skill. Being brave is not a yeah, skill. All right. All that is just to say, like in being in a position where like I can teach a lot of other people things and like teaching is probably going to be in my career path unfortunately. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I'm sorry too. <laughs> I've noticed like whenever I try to help like teach kids how to do stuff, they catch on really quick or somebody who like really respects me and thinks that I'm talented, like they definitely learn from me a lot quicker. But if people like who don't really respect me or who don't like listen at all and like I feel mm-hmm. like that's more how Christian sees Anastasia than like they can't she can't no she can't teach him anything until he's ready to learn yep Maybe so that's what I think teacher. I mean I've considered that too I'm not gonna sit here and say I'm the best ever I get a little impatient sometimes oh god I don't want to start talking about my pet peeves <sighs> <clears throat> well I know some things that Christian or that Anna can teach Christian okay well, no we just established that she could teach him anything so what? Sorry, I'm, so sorry, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, no. Let's go. Let's move on. Let's make Dad cry. <clears throat> oh, uh, <laughs> mine were jokes anyway. She could teach him how to, how to drive without power steering and anti-lock brakes. She could teach him how to function without technology. Um, let's see. What was the other thing? Oh, she could teach him about hardware. Uh, That's true. Oh, yeah. Anastasia, I've heard so much about you. Uh, apparently Christian talks to Mia about things, or Mia is very nosy, or she's a spy, or she's lying. Or no consider that sure. Kate and Elliot are already there, and Kate probably blabbed about it already. <clears throat> yeah, I well, mean... Uh, uh, it uh, sort of sounded like he and Mia didn't really... Or he seemed like, whenever he mentioned her, it sounded like he was a little bit annoyed. Maybe it's just because she's so bubbly, and he can't keep up or something. I think it's just supposed to be one of those stereotypical older brother-younger sister relationships, where... He was probably really annoyed with her when he was younger, and then he mm. still sort of has an affectation of being annoyed, and is generally a little annoyed, but has a lot of affection and probably talks to her about stuff. He, he She probably does most of the talking, but yeah, um, she probably like intuits a lot of what's going on with him or something. But yeah, you're probably right. It might be Kate, too. But I, that's, it's sort of weird to say, like, I, I feel like it would be weird to say I've heard so much about you when you've just heard about that person. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, also, also, his mother has met her, uh, Anna, so that could also be. Yeah, her. that's also. But maybe she didn't have like so much to say. She probably just had something. <laughs> maybe this is just some dumb rich person uh, politeness. Yeah, probably is. Probably is. <laughs> yeah. So when they walk into the drawing room or whatever, where uh, Kate and Elliot are, Kate bounces up to embrace me, and Mia release, finally releases my hand. But why does Kate hug Anna? She lives with her. They see each other every day. It almost seems like an affectation thing, like, oh, it's so good to see you. Like, <laughs> oh, I hate that so much. I um, guess. But I mean, like, they don't do that when they come home from work or whatever, even yeah. though they both don't have jobs. <laughs> um, I think this is just the only way that E.L. James knows how to, like, have characters show affection towards each other. Because yeah. this also came up. Uh, like this time Anna actually acknowledges it but this also came up with like when they were we were they like you were contra- uh, when we were contrasting the personalities of like Elliot and pretty much every character but Christian and Anna is like really hands on mm. and like hugs and like hey what's up smiles broadly he gives big hug like that's every character but yeah. those two mm-hmm. I have some stuff to say about that so like more about the hugs by the way cuz Kate is Kate's situation is extreme but like other people okay elliot grasps me in an all-embracing hug what is this hug anna week this dazzling display of affection i'm just not used to it christian stands at my side wrapping his arm around me placing his hand on my hip he spreads who cares everyone's stand everyone is staring at us it's unnerving uh my sort of thought on this was that like this is james's way of trying to show like how much everyone just loves Anna, like, yep. I mean, this is exactly what they did in Twilight with Bella. Like, Bella, you're so beautiful. Bella, go to the prom with me, Bella. And Be- <laughs> and she's just like, oh. yeah. Ah. Okay, so to make her all like curmudgeonly rather than like basking in the glow of affection, 
is almost kind of like a way to reach out to the reader demographic because like I mean I might as well go ahead and insult everybody because I think anybody who reads this book in the first place and likes it for its presentation is like not smart. <laughs> So, it's probably the kinds of people who think, like, I'm so different, like, nobody really understands me. And that kind of person is not somebody who basks, like, in attention. And if they get it, they're like, oh, I don't know how yeah. I feel about this. Like, well, they, like, well, they secretly probably like it a lot. I have something else. Um, over our dessert of lemon syllabo, Mia regales us with her exploits in Paris, lapsing at one point into fluent French. We all stare at her. And she stares back puzzled, until Christian tells her, in equally pr fluent French, what she's done. Whereupon she bursts into a fit of giggles. She has a very infectious laugh. And soon we're all in stitches. And then everybody clapped. And then the president came and said, here's a medal. <laughs> that was the best story ever. Like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> this is the war. I mean. First of all, that doesn't. I believe that does not happen. I cannot think of a single time I've ever heard somebody just like suddenly lapse into a different language and be like, oh, but me, what, but me, like, <laughs> like, it, it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen, it just doesn't uh, happen. I don't know about that. You don't start, like, I don't think it would happen. Like, unless she was truly bilingual, like, she, she'd been learning both languages from birth. Uh, yeah, I don't think it would happen. That's what I was thinking of. I like, mean, she okay, could have yeah. been. We don't really know where she's from yet. Or ever. That's true. Um, it is a little bit strange that she would like lapse into it without noticing. Though when I was learning French, uh, I would find myself thinking it in French sometimes. But thinking um, is different than speaking. Like I feel like you have to make a true. conscious choice to speak. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and like it's the same with like when I visit countries. I mean, like I, when I go to Sweden, everybody there is bilingual. Nobody just suddenly starts talking in Swedish. Like oh, like just by mistake, like. Yeah, this is this was so I like rolled my eyes the hardest at this. Oh, so bad. It's just so bad. <laughs> Let's just memorialize how bad that is, and then we can move on. We can move on now. Okay, <clears throat> so Christian gets super mad about Anna wanting to go to Georgia. This is more of the same, just him trying to control her life. But my problem is Anna doesn't seem to know if she's going or not, and she plans to go tomorrow. <laughs> evening? <laughs> Tickets will be so expensive. I would think that Anna would at least plan ahead a little bit since she's, you know, so conscious about how much money she doesn't have. And was she going to tell her parents that she was planning on coming? Um, I mean, like, I guess I'm all for spontaneity, but uh, she also mentions that she has interviews tomorrow and she's going to leave, like, right after those interviews, which is a really bad idea. I mean... Not just because, I mean, okay, like, you can have your cell phone with you or whatever in case they want to call you, but what if they want to call you in for a second interview and you're like, oh, um, I skipped town and went to Georgia, <laughs> sorry. Like, hey, you look great. All right, you, your resume is great. Like, can you start tomorrow? Like, oh. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's just not something you do. Well, given the ticket, the ticket consideration, perhaps she's planning to drive. And like Anastasia's all saying <laughs> how like fucking poor she is and stuff. Like, yeah. Do you think this might be another like American thing? Maybe maybe you know, James doesn't quite have a grasp on how far yeah like Seattle to fucking Georgia is. That like is all the way likely. across the continental United States. You know, because England's compared to the continental United States is exactly a uni. Like it doesn't <laughs> at all take as well, long. Yeah, you can you can like drive from London to Paris. Like, yeah. <laughs> the, but yeah, this is just, like, and it's very strange to, like, suddenly introduce this idea when she's basically, I'm trying to think of... God, yeah, how, how long did she say she was planning to stay? Because if she leaves after interview, assuming it's, like, in the afternoon or even in the morning... She said she was leaving, uh, she had interviews in the day, and she was planning on leaving late evening that late day. Late evening? She'd get there, like, the next afternoon? Because yeah. assuming she'd have, like, assuming she didn't have a non-stop flight, she'd have layovers, it'd probably be, like, a 12-hour trip. Yeah, and then, like, she said that she didn't know how long she was going to stay, and it depended on how her interviews went. So, uh, just <laughs> this is not a good fucking plan, <laughs> and, I, and I know that this is just, even though I haven't read the book, I know that this is just a... Uh, um, a drama strategy, basically. Ex a, yeah, and an excuse for like her to go somewhere so that Christian can suddenly show up, yeah. even despite the distance, and surprise her and be like, 
See, I'm controlling your life here too. See how dedicated I am to come all the way to Georgia. Yeah, but at least he can afford it. <laughs> yeah, he has a private jet too. That sort of dovetails in good to what I wanted to talk about next, which was like Christian's dumb reaction. I made everything different colors in case we all wanted to read together. I'll be narration. okay. You want to narrate, and I'll be Anastasia. So Chad starts. When were you going to tell me you were leaving? He asks urgently. His tone is soft, but he's masking his anger. I'm not leaving. I'm going to see my mother, and I was only thinking about it. What about our arrangement? We don't have an arrangement yet. He narrows his eyes and then seems to remember himself. Releasing in my hand, he takes my elbow and leads me out of the room. And then he's like, this conversation isn't over. Uh, they're both, they're both being, they're both being dicks here. Like... He's like, when yeah. were you gonna tell me? And she's like, ah, like it's no big deal. Like, chill the fuck out. Like, but it is kind of a big deal. Like, to not say anything and to go tomorrow. Like, yeah, that's like, a little weird. Tomorrow. I don't know. That's so dumb. Uh, just wanted to highlight that, and make it clear for our listeners that it was dumb. She also doesn't mention this uh, to to the reader. Yeah. yeah. She doesn't mention she's, this she's, She at briefly all. says, oh, it would be nice to go to Georgia and I get mean, away. And she talks to her mom. Christian. And is like, it would be nice. Like, I'll think about it. But we only know that she's been thinking yeah. about it. Um, okay. Christian's parents ask how they met? Or is this Mia? I can't remember. Mia asks I- how she met Christian. She- no. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Hang on. So, because I, I thought this was at dinner. Um, so, like, yeah, they're at dinner. Mia. And so, yeah, Mia asks how they met. Uh, Anna and Christian, and Anna tells them all. No, like, Christian that, tells. Or Christian tells them all. Sorry, yeah, Christian tells them all that uh, Anna interviewed him for the student newspaper at WSU. Uh, and we talked about this before, but like when he says it like that, it's pretty pretty weird and a little messed yeah. up. Like if it, if she had been closer to his age, like not that the age gap really is a huge deal, but like since she was still a student and he was going to be the commencement speaker. And also he's like a super rich billionaire. But like if, if she'd been like, say he'd actually been 30 and she was like 29 or 28 or something and actually interviewing him as a journalist wouldn't be quite as bad because there'd be more. I mean, I kind of have to push you on this one because like, okay, if you are like 27 or something and you, and somebody asks you, how did you meet your girlfriend? And you say, she interviewed me for the school newspaper and then you immediately followed up with like, she was a, like, she's a senior. Yeah. Like at college. College needs school. When she was a college senior, before she graduated, she interviewed me for the paper. And, like, that doesn't sound as weird to me. Like, uh, it's okay. Uh, yeah, I, I guess so. I, f- I feel like it, I feel like, and I think this was intentionally, like, input put to, uh, put into the book. Well, it just, like, it's obviously it was done to create a power imbalance in the very beginning. So. The fact that there is a big gap in their, how much they have going for them, and also their age and stuff. Yes, I agree with that. And that is obviously, like, a fetishistic thing as far as that goes. I don't see her being the dom and him being the rich, beautiful sub or anything, you know? Yeah. yeah. So I do. I agree with you. But I don't know. I think that on its head, it's not that crazy. I mean, I, I don't think that it's weird for people to, like, you, you were interviewing somebody for something and uh you decide to like see each other i just i think him putting it that way sort of makes it emphasizes how possibly questionable the meeting really is or the decision all right well uh, <laughs> okay so uh we mentioned earlier about the food that they eat so they eat chorizo um beef wellington and the syllabub and they have prosecco they have prosecco wine and um so I've noticed this, that E.L. James in the last couple of chapters has really stepped up her food description game, by which I mean she sort of describes it, but she takes time out of the book to do it. And it's really getting on my nerves, because I don't think anyone cares about the food yeah, that they're eating. I think she might be one of those people, because I feel like I remember when looking at her Instagram, she had a lot of pictures of like gourmet food. Yep, I um, think that is totally it. Like, I, I It's just... I, in, my, in my note is like, what is with all this stupid gourmand bullshit? I like, <laughs> it's just it's like super bourgeois too. Um, mm-hmm. She because she goes out of her way to describe like like Christian's nice woodsy restaurant where they kill deer to eat them yeah. uh, the, the day of, and then like beef Wellington, which is like ex- which is expensive and considered very difficult to make, and 
Trezo, which is Trezo. Um, no, it's tre- but it's Trezo and scallops, which are scallops, <laughs> however you say it. Um, and those are those are considered fancy. Yeah, scallops scallops are fancy, but they do live in they are in Washington State, so they could probably get them for. And that's like an that's like an appetizer or like an hors d'oeuvre mm-hmm. type yeah. deal. Like that is. They yeah. also had hors d'oeuvres in addition. Oh, they did. Oops. <laughs> the scallops were the hors d'oeuvres. Oh, were they? Okay. Mm-hmm. It was chorizo and scallops. Oh, so I was right. <laughs> Sorry, that was so that was so bratty of me. Go ahead. Uh, okay. So my last thing is that when all the Paris stuff is happening, like me is like, uh, like, have you ever been to Paris? And then Kate's like, I love Paris. And then Christian's parents are like, we honeymooned in Paris. And like, who gives a shit? <laughs> like, what? They don't. No one cares that you honeymooned in Paris. There's a thing they've been. Yeah. They're, but they're saying it to their own they could daughter. Just say, We've they probably been to already Paris. knows that. Like, yeah, exactly. Like they could just say. Well, maybe they're saying it to Kate and Anna. Well, they could just say we've been to Paris too. Like they don't have to say we honeymooned in Paris. That's like bragging. Well, I think it can be seen as bragging because miserable people like us don't really have the hopes of honeymooning in Paris. <laughs> maybe I'm projecting here. Um... Sorry. <laughs> just bringing this podcast down, 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 and to the ground. All right, let's. Move yes. On. Sorry. Okay. It's... Sorry no, for it's the okay. betrayal. No, I, I, it was my fault. Kate chat though. Uh, wow. Um, I guess it's me. Isn't it amazing? Kate's a fucking mess right now. <laughs> She's become really weird and manipulative about Anastasia and Christian. Like, um, and my thought was kind of like, okay, well, no, I'll just say why why she's crazy first. And here's the quote. Kate smiles, a wicked gleam in her eye. How was Jose when you went to the bar with him on Friday? She asks Anastasia in front of Christian, who doesn't know this. Holy fuck, Kate. I widen my eyes at her. What is she doing? She widens her eyes back at me, and I realize she's trying to make Christian jealous. How little she knows. I mean, like, oh my god, the little eye widening thing? That is, like, the cattiest. Just imagine it in your mind's eye, like, oh? And she's like, like, you know, so like. (laughs) She just looks surprised to me. Like first of all, like the like saying, "How was Jose when you went to the bar with him on Friday?" It sounds like she's saying, "How was the fucking you guys did?" Yeah, it does. Yeah, because she was there when they left. Like they were hanging out before Elliot came in, so she knew how he was, as you know, how he was doing in his life. So it sort of sounds like she's saying, "How was he to you?" Right. Yeah. I mean, if Kate had, like, if this sort of At thing happened point. to me, pro- well, maybe not if the person's parents, since the person's parents were there, but if someone had been, like, this antagonistic, I probably would have been, like, especially with the implication of, like, how was the sex with Jose on Friday? I would have been, like, <laughs> how was the sex in our brand new apartment after you forced us out with all your sex, yeah, that's Kate? that's exactly what I would have <laughs> said. I would have said, like, well, we were sad to leave the apartment because, like, somebody was fucking loudly... <laughs> With their fuck screens and fuck screens. You were still fucking when we got back. It was loud. We could hear you. <laughs> yeah, like, like it's not every day you have to leave your apartment because your roommate's being, like, disruptive. Like, to say something, like, really equally as catty and, like, embarrass her would be great. Ah, but, you know, yeah, and, we're evil, I guess. <laughs> and I just don't understand why she's doing this. Even if she doesn't know, like, how pissy Christian gets, it's not cool to try and make Christian jealous. Like, yeah, why would you do He that? already likes her a lot, and it feel like that's quite apparent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's just not necessary or a good idea. And she's with his family. Like, there's no reason to stir this yeah. shit up in this situation at it's all. It's kind of almost like she wants them yeah. to break up or something. I think uh, that's what it is. Yeah, you're right. I just, that just occurred Aside to me. from all the times where she's like, He's so interesting. Tell me about him and your first relationship. She's also like, but don't do it. It's just to get dirt on how to torment them, basically. It's crazy (laughs) to think that way, but it's Yeah, I just, I I sort of can't believe, like, how antagonistic she's being in front of, like, his family, who seems by all accounts pretty okay. Yeah. Um, Yeah, they don't really And she doesn't know anything about Christian personally, so there's really no reason for her to, like, be going after him in front of his family. Yeah. (laughs) Really. I mean, why doesn't, why doesn't Elliot stop her? Like, I don't know. Yeah, seriously. Like, she hasn't brought up any concerns about Christian um, to him, his brother, she, yeah. who she's fucking. It seems like that would be a pretty... If she was so concerned, she could talk to him about uh-huh. it, maybe. But, I don't know. Like I said, I still think that <laughs> Elliot's whole purpose is to run interference so that Kate will be distracted well, uh, <laughs> so Christian can swoop in and, and grab a... It's, it's not working very well. Well, and a, another interesting thing is that, like, uh, before Kate drops that Jose thing on uh, Anna 
and uh, Christian. Christian, I think Christian's being really pissy about the Georgia thing, and Kate like defends Anna, and Anna's like, Anna calls her out for being antagonistic after Kate like basically stands up for her. Yeah. Which I thought was really funny. And then Kate actually does do something extremely antagonistic. Ugh. Yeah, it's pretty disgusting. I mean, she, I don't know. Where are we in our notes? I don't even know. I uh, I flushed Scarlet. Oh yeah, okay, so more about Kate. But this is before that happens, that whole Jose thing happens. Here's what I flushed Scarlet, and seeing Kate sitting with Elliot, it occurs to me that suddenly, or sorry, it occurs to me suddenly that the only reason Christian invited me is because Kate is here. Elliot probably freely and happily asked Kate to meet his parents. Christian was trapped, knowing that I would have found out via Kate. Uh, one has to wonder if Kate is responsible for orchestrating this. Obviously, I don't, maybe not obviously, I don't really think that Christian wouldn't, I I think that he would be an ass about it and just not invite Anastasia, like, if he wasn't going to get caught, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, who is he gonna look- oh, yeah, I guess he would look bad in front of Kate. But, I mean, that's kind of- I guess, I mean, there was uh, also the fact that his mother knew about Anastasia and was probably like, Hey, idiot yeah. son, who's never had a girlfriend, as far as I know, <laughs> like, why don't you bring your girlfriend? Yeah, that makes sense. But it kind of does- it kind of does sound like Kate was like, Hey, Elliot, like, make sure Anastasia comes. Like, don't let Christian- Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, it probably wouldn't- make things any better no. if he showed up without Anna and Kate was like where's Anna don't you give a shit about her yeah but then that's kind of like what the conclusion that Anastasia came to was that like you know Kate wouldn't have let it slide exactly. yeah. so I think I, th- I also sort of think though that Christian probably does sort of want to bring her because he could also easily have just said I don't I can't come to dinner no I bet not I bet he really wanted to see his like sister and family and stuff he could do that whenever they don't live that far away no, no, but his sister just came back from France. Oh, right, that's yeah. right. She just came back from Paris. Um, I don't know. I, I get the impression that he does. Like, he wants to see his sister. He also, I think, he does kind of want to show off Anna. He's like uncom- He's just uncomfortable with it. But, uh, but I mean, like, if he really, I mean, aside from wanting to see his sister, if he really wanted to get out of a family dinner, he does like run a whole company. Yeah, just say like I'm excuse. busy that night or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, I've got stuff I got. I guess do. what I was trying to get at here is that like. Is Anastasia doing one of these things where she's being unreasonable and like, oh, no one would ever like me? Or like, do we really think that Christian wouldn't have done this if not by the grace of Kate or whatever? Hmm. That's tough to say. I mean, he fe- I feel like he he wants to be around her, mm-hmm. but... And he was like excited about introducing her to his mom when she showed up. Yeah. But he was also sort of forced into that situation. I don't know. I don't know either. His main discomfort is that he's being pushed so far outside of his comfort. Or, uh, yeah, out of his comfort zone, obviously. Fascinating. Um, but Fascinating. What? It's almost <laughs> like... It's almost like it's some kind of parallel. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just kidding. But I'm not kidding, because obviously it is. Um, I, yeah, it's strange, because at times he does seem to enjoy, like, yay, like, I have, you know, somebody I can show off and stuff. But at the same time, he does seem uncomfortable with it. Almost is this same way. I don't know why that makes me mad. Okay, uh, <laughs> so Elliot has decided to follow Kate's family to Barbados. They've known each other for less than a month. The whole like introducing you to the parents thing and like going on vacation seems to be moving really fast. I actually, number one, I don't think this is that weird. Number two. I would do this kind of thing, not really with boyfriends, but definitely, like, with my friends. I would invite them on, like, family trips, and I've gotten people come Yeah, but me. I would not do that after a month. I would. Because, uh, well, it's well, no biggie, really. I mean, like, yeah, you might break up this person, you might stop being friends with your friend, but whatever. I don't know, I hate due to person- I am very cagey about uh, friends and my parents. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> um, not every family is the same. But, uh, of course, the true test of a relationship is going on vacation together because all sorts of shit goes wrong and you have to, like, be that with them all yeah. the time. So I guess it's good to get that over with as soon as yeah, possible. Yeah, that that's one way to think about it, too. So, and I gets, like, mega turned on when uh, she's watching Kate and Elliot. I'm going to read it. I glance up at Kate and she's hanging on ev- every word Elliot says, her eyes glowing with lust or love. I haven't quite worked out which yet. He grins down at her, and it's as if an unspoken promise passes between them. Laters, baby. (laughs) And it's hot. Freaking hot. I flush just watching them. Uh, So clearly, you know, another setup for a threesome that's not going to happen. Yeah, obviously. (laughs) Um, 
and you yeah, have, have some comments. I really hate it when this happens in real life. Just like when you look over and your friends are like, <laughs> or whatever, or doing yeah. what they're doing here. Like, like, uh, number one, you don't like to think about your friends having sex, really. I mean, like, I can accept that it happens, right. but I don't want to be there. And then, there's kind of like the additional thing. I'm, I'm sure this is due to me being a freak of nature. Um, of nature? No, just like a freak. Like, when people do that, like, it's not like I don't not notice. And by that I mean like, you know, oh my god, like, I mean I have the same problem like if I'm watching TV and suddenly like a lady is shirtless, I'm like, oh, like I feel like I don't want other people to see me at that time. Because when I see sexual things, they're sexual. And it makes me feel slightly like, hey, sex. Um, but anyways, all that to say, like it just makes me feel gross. I don't like it when people do that. Like when they're like really, like even if it's like, oh, unspoken promise, like, like, mm -hmm. you know, you think that no one notices you, but, like, I promise somebody is noticing you and feeling uncomfortable. So just don't do that. Yeah, I, I used to get, like, uncomfortable if, like, someone would just, like, put their arm around me or something when we were, like, in a group of friends. Mm -hmm. Like, I just, like, no, don't, that's not, no. <laughs> uh, and I agree. I don't know. I don't mind so much about, like, the arm or whatever, but I, I've noticed... I mean, that's just, like, too extreme degree. For I've me. noticed that, like, when that kind of thing happens, I get, like, all saucy I'm like no like and I <laughs> like I can't control it but like it's sort of like you want to keep that in, to your private life you don't want other people to see you like that yeah. I don't know why I guess that's something to think about maybe we're all just super repressed or something <laughs> so goddess chat um the inner goddess is the one who makes or supports the decision to go without panties she's basically like yes really? yes yeah oh that's mm -hmm. right yeah, yeah yeah I'm not gonna read the quotes so I don't care <laughs> The subconscious gives a lot of uh, not specific but string of word type expressions. For instance, my subconscious nods sagely. A, you finally worked it out, stupid, look on her face. And if you just took away one um, of the hyphens, it would say, you finally worked it out, stupid, look on her face. Yep. <laughs> Which would be better. Hmm. Um, chat? chat? Yeah, oh, you want to say that at the end? Okay. So it's Charity instead. So, my inner goddess sighs with relief. I reach the conclusion that she rarely uses her brain to think, but another vital part of her anatomy. And at the moment, it's a rather exposed part. So, the inner goddess is either also not wearing panties, or she shares a vagina with Anna? Either she sort of, like, is the vagina, or she lives, like, inside of it. Like, where does the goddess reside? Not in the mind. No, not in the heart, but in the vag. She's not residing, though. She's thinking. She has a brain and a vagina. That's true. I mean, I just feel like she's obviously very connected to the vagina. That's all it is. It's just a brain connected to a vagina floating in space. <laughs> Amazing. Oh. <laughs> also, she's smoldering, and not in a good way. <laughs> yeah, um, because she, she's about to go out. I was gonna say, I feel like things have mainly <clears throat> been sustained since last chapter. I don't, I don't quite remember what we decided on. Was, I was remembering like the the ballet thing, of course. But anyways, there is a little evidence of Anna controlling, and we have like the smoldering, but not in a good way. And that kind of brings to mind the whole volcano thing again. So I say that the threat level should be ever so slightly raised to threatening smoky volcano smoke gray. <laughs> Sounds All good. Right. All right. Sounds good. All right. Favorite lines. Mine is dashing back into the bathroom. I check myself in the mirror. Eyes bright, cheeks slightly flushed, slightly smug look because of my panty plan. <laughs> and just the the phrase panty plan. Panty plan. Or what is this? Hug Anna week. <laughs> Even though it is just to stay that she's being hugged. Yeah. Maybe they're talking about graduation or something, but I don't think so. I too don't think so. It should be hug Anna like five minutes. <laughs> Do we think that Anna hates hugs? Yes. Okay. Mm, I don't know. I don't, I don't care. think so. All the panty lines are hilarious. Uh, yeah. Now I'm almost outside with no panties. And that is capital no, <laughs> capital panties, italics. The, my second runner up is, uh, who's he kidding? He's no gentleman. He has my panties. As if that was like a mutually exclusive thing. Trying to say gentlemen <laughs> can't have your panties? Gentlemen's? I didn't even realize that I said that. <laughs> this is part of a longer line, but I like the beginning, which is, there are shrubs in gray stone tubs. I like the rhythm <laughs> and the rhyming. It feels very Dr. Seuss. <laughs> what was good? Nothing. I hated this chapter. Uh, I guess Christian's parents seem like they're kind of nice. 
I guess that's all right. Mm, it was all yeah. just like <sighs> pretense bullshit, <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah, I just agree. Just like I... saying, look how nice this family is and how great uh, Anna gets along with them. Mm-hmm. Yep, I, I felt the same way. Like, I, I guess dinner seemed all right, but it was all just like they all they all seemed very all right, which is just like yeah. funny. all American assholes, just like very relatable elite people. Like, everything's fine except for this one thing where Christian's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Safe words. Christian is being a huge dick, despite not having signed the contract. Like, he... At the end of this chapter, he's like, you you didn't tell me about the thing about going to Georgia or Jose, and so now I'm going to, on my parents' property, fuck you in the boathouse and spank you. That's right, and I actually, um... I have, like, the lines of the end of the chapter... Because oh, yeah. in the original summary, Chad was not very explicit about what happened. I guess we could read this together. Or it doesn't matter. Do we just want to? Uh, I'll be I'll be somebody. Um, you could be Anastasia. You're not Anastasia very often. Yeah, I was gonna suggest that. <laughs> Do it. Christian pulls me behind him, and my heels sink into the soft grass. Stop, please. I am stumbling in his wake. He stops and gazes at me. His expression unfathomable. My heels, I need to take my shoes off. Don't bother! He says, and he bends down and scoops me over his shoulder. I squeal loudly with shocked surprise, and he gives me a ringing slap on my behind. Keep your voice down! He growls. Oh no, this is not good. My subconscious is quaking at the knees. He's mad about something. Could be Jose, Georgia, no panties, biting my lip. Jeez, he's easy to rile. Where are we going? I breathe. Boathouse! He snaps. I hang on to his hips as I'm tipped upside down, and he strides purposefully in the moonlight across the lawn. Why? I sound breathlessly, bouncing on his shoulder. I need to be alone with you. What for? Because I'm going to spank, and then fuck you. Why? I whimper softly. You know why. Or no, he he hisses, hisses, so... You know why. He hisses. I I thought you were an in-the-moment guy. I plead breathlessly. Anastasia, I'm in the moment. Trust me. Holy fuck. (laughs) Holy fuck. (laughs) Well, let's see the chapter. Let's see the chapter. So, I mean, so, that's kind of scary. Yep. Yeah. They're at the point where she hasn't consented really to anything. So she can all, she can say no at any time and have a yep. great case against him for, like, sexual assault or something. So if she really doesn't want this, it's easy. Just, I mean, well, it's not easy. It's hard because it's hard to say no because it's scary. Maybe she does want it, though, is the thing. Yeah, you know, that's what E.L. James wants us to think, but it's... It just yeah. it just kind of clashes with what you expect in a consensual situation. That's all. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. It's just like the dude needs to calm down and control himself while he's at his parents' house. Mm-hmm. Come on. In the middle of dinner. Or, well, no, they're after dinner, but still. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Okay, the next thing is the cable size. And it's, I guess it's everybody's yeah. safe word. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody hates that. Chad? Uh, Anastasia has a line about like how this Miss Robinson, Mrs. Robinson character, like ruined Christian, and the implication is like the BDSM stuff. Uh, not really the fact that their relationship was sort of abusive, or like because she was so much older and he was like a teenager. And I'm not entirely sure which, like, how she's really trying to say that she ruined him. Um, well, I mean. <laughs> If she's made him into the person that he is, which is kind of a huge dick, then I would say, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's true. But it's hard to say because I guess they may explore this in later chapters and or the other books. But like, it also, there's also like a really strong implication throughout most of the text that that's just Christian's personality. And she sort of just, uh, he just hadn't realized it or something. So it's hard to say, like, did she really ruin him, or did she like bring that out in him? Did she turn him into that? He was so young that it's it's really hard to to say. Yeah, I, think, to... I have something here to say based on like my personal experiences with this kind of thing. When you when somebody hurts you and they do it in the context of like BDSM, it's really tempting to say they are fucked up because they like these things, not they like these things and they are fucked up. Like, there's a big difference. Yeah, and that's something that you know, like. It was also very hard for me to sort that out. Like, I had to say it, but yeah, there was definitely a time where I was like, oh, like, people like that are just, you know, they're they're weird and abnormal, but like, who cares, first of all? Um, I've grown up since then, and I hope that anybody else thinking that also grows up a little bit. Like, it's just, you know, your feelings are your feelings and everything, and nobody should have to be traumatized or have to go through hard things, but, you know, not all X's are Y. 
or whatever. Like, if you're really trying to rationalize this out in a way that didn't sort of vilify uh, this sort of, like, a like BDSM, it would be that she ruined him because she gave him a completely inaccurate, like, idea of what it's supposed to be. Since Perhaps, were... you know, she ruined him by getting him into an unhealthy relationship, in essence. Because that's what it was. Yeah. Yes. That's what I was saying. Oh, sorry. Sorry. It's just, it <laughs> took a while to get there, I guess. Yeah, I, well, I was saying, like, because of the nature of their relationship, which he's sort of, try, sort of trying to replicate with Anna, um, like, I don't, I don't remember, like, I don't remember, did they mention that, like, they had a contract or anything? No, not, not yet. Event, as, she... Not yet. I don't think that they did, but we could see. Yeah, it's sort of weird, because Christian doesn't, the way that, like, he's dealing with Anna is, like, uh, messing with him so hard, like he's breaking all of his rules and stuff because of how passionate he is. It's really sort of hard to understand what about the like relationship from before is affecting this and like how he's just reacting to like finally being in love or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and like if that like his concept of love is messed up because of this relationship or if he just has a bad concept of love because he's sort of a sociopathic monster. Um, I mean, you know, it could be either of those things, but I think a lot of people, especially people who are in relationships that are loving or that have that component for the first time, like, it doesn't change who you are or whatever. Like, well, I mean, exactly. some people need to go to, th you know, get help because of the way that they treat others and just to realize, all right, this is unhealthy, but you can still love somebody even if you are unhealthy about that. Well, exactly. And I think that's sort of why it's hard, like, I'm having trouble... I think in the book, it's pretty much Anna just straightforwardly saying like, oh, this, all the all the BDSM stuff is how he's ruined. But I think that is uh, not accurate. No, it's not. And I think, but on the other hand, that is, that wouldn't be an, an inaccurate way to say how some people try to rationalize that. Yeah, yeah that, that's true. I mean, I think that's part of the problem. I like, think so. Anastasia is just, doing this thing like she's not thinking about it at all mm -hmm. she's just assuming she's just immediately assuming and it, like it's a calm it's been happening throughout the book like he's fucked up because of this stuff not that they can coexist as you were saying yeah and it doesn't really anyway. as of yet as of halfway through the book that hasn't developed into a more nuanced understanding so i see why you would want to point that out and i agree all right well spoiler dungeon though which yeah. Uh, does Kristen show up in Georgia? Uh-huh. He does. Does she know that he's going to show up? Uh, no. Uh, I don't think so, anyways. So he's just, like, up here mm -hmm. at his her mom's house or something? Oh, so no, no, they, he shows up at, like, a bar, I think, is the way that happens. Still, also creepy. Uh, it's probably even creepier. <laughs> Did Christian fuck the maid? Not to my knowledge. She wasn't, like, one of the subs or anything. She, and, like, she barely ever turns oh, up again, too. She's just another jealousy prop, basically. Oh, I thought there was a thing. Oh, well. Dumb. Okay, well, I think we're done with the freaking pod for now. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we good way, we're a good ways through this book. I'm uh, proud of us. I, too, am proud of us. Yeah. I like this pod. Holy cast. Yeah, all right, so... Uh, so freaking... So... Pod... <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, <laughs> later's baby. Later's baby. Later's baby. <laughs> <laughs>